big boy! Big boy! Oh, that's so nice. Today's a very special day. Hello, everyone. Uh, because we're going to JoJo Siwa's birthday party. Now, I thought that maybe this would not. <laughs> She's giving you kisses. Oh, that's nice. Who's that, Maisie? You giving kisses? Anyway, I love JoJo. Obviously, she's like a sister. She's like one of my favorite human beings on planet Earth. It's her and her brother's birthday party tonight. And so we obviously wanted to go, but it's too late for the babies to go. And I was just gone on tour. I missed the baby, so I leave them again for the night to go to JoJo's birthday party. But they're too little to go stay out there. Um, they'd be miserable. So, Hi guys, oof, my hair's a mess. Sorry, earlier I tried to vlog, but Maisie didn't want me to do that, so she turned off the camera. She just kept pushing the button, so I was like, I'll just vlog later. I need to find something to wear to JoJo's birthday because it's JoJo's birthday, which means I have to wear sparkles, like obviously, right? You can't just like not wear sparkles to JoJo's with birthday party. So, we're in my sparkle closet. Let's figure out what to wear. Okay, so obviously I want to be casual. It's just a fun like birthday at Dave and Buster's, but I also want to sparkle. So, but I mostly only have sparkle dresses. I do have sparkly pants, like these beautiful sparkly pants, but there's no pockets, so it's kind of a bust. Something like just simple, but it's not very colorful. I don't know, actually, I hate this idea. I also have these like black sparkly legging moments, but then like what shirt? You know? I also have this oversized jacket. I think that's kind of fun. Or is it? I don't know what to wear. But I feel like I have to wear sparkles. I feel like I, it would be a sin to go to JoJo Siwa's birthday party and not wear sparkles. So I need to figure this out. Okay, we need to go to JoJo's party in like 20 minutes. And I just cleaned out the chicken coop. Took way longer than I thought I was going to. Ah, bug in my ear. I mean, I've been cleaning out their poops, but like to clean out the whole thing was gross. It took a very long time. So now we're a little behind schedule. That's okay. Hi right, guys. We're hanging out with the chickens outside. What's wrong? Maisie wants the camera. Oh, there's the baby. There's the baby. Oh no. She found the on off button and is obsessed with pushing it, so it's just gonna randomly turn off and turn back on. Anyway, like I said, uh, I did not make that cut. Maisie made that cut. Um, and she's about to turn it off again. Okay, oh, what are you doing? Are you taking pictures? Maisie, say hi. Wessie's over there playing with the sand pit. What you doing, Wes? Playing with sand? And I set up a little area for the chickens to run around and play in the grass. Oh, I think they want to go back to their coop now. They've been out for like an hour. And Flynn, what are you up to? I'm up to dig. You're digging with and a stick? A mobo. Okay. And a mobo? What's a mobo? Mobo is trying to dig in great bushes like this, trying to save the bushes. Oh, I never heard of that. Right up here we have Mr. Big. Big is eating the grass. And right over here we have Little Pink. That's Pink's booty booty in the sky. And right here we have Miscellaneous. She's a walking and a strutting stuff. And right over here we have Applesauce. Sitting right in my lap. You gonna pet the birdie? Applesauce. Whoa! Whoa! Applesauce. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's that funny? What's that funny? Maisie, watch. There was so much traffic and it's 8.30 and Flynn is always asleep by eight usually and um, he's definitely delusional right now. More?
Mommy, that might be Mommy's bird from the movie. It's not mine. Flynn, was that so fun? Yeah, yeah! Can you believe you're still awake? Oh, you just ate. That was a god candy. <laughs> just got Did you want this? <laughs> Did you want that? <laughs> Silly guy. It is so late. He had so much fun. Don't eat it. It was very fun, but it's time to go. We have a long drive. Um, we're going to the escalators right now. There's about 400 of them we have to take. Oh my goodness, it is 12.30 a.m. We had so much fun, and I went and read the comments on my vlog that I posted today. I asked you guys for suggestions, for book suggestions for the kids, and oh my gosh, you guys came through. So many incredible teachers, and just caretakers, and just people who are smarter than me, who know more books than me. You gave me so many good suggestions, so I'm gonna share, but please go read the comments on that if you want other book suggestions. Okay, so Lauren said, strongly suggest the books, The Monsters at the End of This Book, and Another Monster at the End of the Book. They're amazing funny books with Elmo and Grover, making sure your kids have a good laugh. The twins love those characters, so it's a great addition. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Lauren. I had all these replies with all these people saying like, I was just about to recommend this one. Thank you. Kate recommended um, Harold and the Purple Crayon, which I know that book, but I don't have it. So thank you, I will get it. Rachel said, um, I was a toddler teacher and my favorite book to read was We All Sing With The Same Voice. And you think Flynn would love it. So thank you so much. The Pigeon series, a lot of people said, which I think we have a couple of the Pigeon books. I think I need to reread those to Flynn because I think he'd be super into them. He loved them a while ago, but like we should reread those. So thank you for the suggestion. As a teacher, Carly Herbert. Hi Carly, thank you for being a teacher. I love you. Um, I highly recommend the Elephant and Piggy books when it comes to interactive books. And We Are in a Book is a classic. So thank you, I will definitely check those out. And Beth said, do not open this book by Andy Lee is another great interactive book. He's an Australian comedian author and he's hilarious also because you appreciate farts, Colleen. There's another book called No One Likes a Fart, which is also amazing. I read these books to my kids at my work and they find them so hilarious. Thank you, I'm so excited you guys, oh my gosh. And then Alyssa said, as someone with no kids but who has some friends who do, I always gift them the book, The Wonky Donkey. I'm sure Flynn would love how silly the book is. It's hilarious for kids and the reader. Highly recommend. So thank you so much. And then I also wanted to read this one comment to end the night. Rebecca said, this vlog put a smile on my face. Thank you. I love watching your babies grow. It gives me hope. My daughter was born May 1st. Congratulations. And I had an emergency C-section. I am so sorry. Those are so scary from experience. That honestly is one of the scariest things, probably the scariest thing I've ever been through my life and I'm so sorry you had to go through that. It is never anyone's plan or hope to have to have an emergency c-section. It's not fun and I'm so sorry you had to go through that. She's been in the NICU ever since. My hospital has a tiny little room where I'm able to stay really close to the baby because I'm pumping for her. She had to have feeding tube put in yesterday in hopes that she'll finally gain weight instead of losing weight. It's been a rough journey. I'm sad I'll be in the hospital for my first Mother's Day but I know I'll be able to spend every Mother's Day after this with her. I know that feeling. I'm so sorry. We had to spend Thanksgiving in the hospital when the baby's in the NICU. It was so painful to not have my babies home for their first big holiday. And in fact, last year on Thanksgiving, I kept thinking to myself, oh, it's their first Thanksgiving, even though it wasn't because it's almost like my mind wanted to block the first one. I almost wanted to be like, it doesn't count, it doesn't count, but it did count. And they were strong on that first Thanksgiving and we had to go to the hospital and be with them there and then go home and be with our family there. And it was really hard to split up the day. So I'm so sorry that you have to go through that. And you are so strong. And I know that there's nothing anyone can say that can make you feel okay when your baby is in the NICU because it's just painful. It's not natural. It's not natural for a mom to be separated from her baby ever and not be at home and in your own space taking care of your brand new baby. It feels so unnatural. It feels wrong. It's painful. Oh, it is heartbreaking, gut-wrenching. I'm so sorry that you're going through that right now, but I'm so proud of you that you're doing it and I'm so proud of your little baby girl. She's doing it and my babies both had feeding tubes and um, they eventually figured out how to use a bottle and um, they got to come home and now look at them, they're a year and a half years old. And I know that like, you know, that's not necessarily that helpful when you're in the NICU every day, like in the thick of it, it's just hard. Even though my instinct is to be like, everything's gonna be okay. And like, look where my kids are compared to like when they were in the NICU for six weeks. I think one of the most helpful things for me when I was in that situation was knowing that other moms had been through it and survived it. And that there were other moms currently going through it and could understand what I was going through in that moment. And just hearing other moms who've been through it say like this is hard it's hard like what you're going through is so hard and just having someone like validate how hard that experience was was really validating and I think is what I needed more than anything else because I knew eventually my babies would come home it wasn't that I thought they'd never come home I and I knew they were gonna come home it was just I wanted them home now and they weren't home and it was like it didn't matter how many times people told me they're gonna come home I was like but I want them home now and I'm in pain now because I want them home now just know that I'm sorry that like this is probably not the the journey that you were hoping to have and 
in your baby's first days and weeks of her life, but um, you're doing a great job and I'm so sorry. I know how hard it is and it's, oh, it's so painful, but you're amazing and strong and I'm proud of you and I will be thinking of you on Mother's Day and all the moms who have to spend Mother's Day in the NICU. Oh my God, I could cry. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna go um, shower and go to sleep, but I love you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary, and we're locked in our home, but now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.